Welcome to this short course on object stores. This series of tutorials is part of a new HDS blog that deals with data content. Uh, despite the fact that object stores have been around for about a decade now, there's still a fair number of misconceptions about them. So in this series of brief tutorials, we hope to provide a fairly comprehensive view of object stores and how they operate. Rather than just do print articles, we'll present this in video form as I think that's the best way to do tutorials. In some respects, video is even better than doing these live because the viewer can stop and go back over areas at their own choosing. Further, video has begun to supplement or even replace written documentation for many new products. So we'll be trying it here in place of a blog presented in written form only. Uh, one note, we could just as easily substitute in the term content stores in place of object stores as that term is becoming more prevalent. So throughout this, if I'm using one term or the other, you can really treat those as synonyms. Uh, my name is Bob Primer, and I work on Hitachi Content Platform, or HCP, uh, for HDS. Prior to HCP, I worked on two other object stores at EMC. The first was Sentero, which came out in 2002, and then I worked on Atmos. I've been with HDS since 2009 and have been working on HCP ever since. Uh, at the gross level, there are three goals to this series, beginning with describing what an object store is, why we would use it versus other forms of storage, and then get into how they function under the covers. Uh, the seri series begins very basic, with no real technical background assumed or required. This is important as part of the purpose of this series is to help educate the sales team. However, as we progress, the topics will grow in complexity, particularly when we get to describing the how. So those sections are geared more toward a technical audience. So let's, uh, let's walk through a list of potential topics for this short course. These are topics I've come up with thus far, though I would expect that this list is going to change as we progress through the full series, but it's a decent straw man to begin with. Uh, for me, when I first heard the term structured and unstructured data, it wasn't intuitively obvious what was meant by these terms, as all stored data has structure. So it's a bit of a misnomer, and therefore probably a good place to start, as this notion is foundational to the whole idea of content stores. We then work to understand what are these things we call objects and the thing that houses them, uh, which are object or content stores. And we finish the series by talking about where I would use an object store versus other forms of storage, such as uh, block and file. We then talk about uh, industry implications of object stores. Uh, there are two big ones that come to mind. First, since object stores are pure software systems, they can and do collide with traditional applications, creating some tension there. Second, uh, there's a real difference in the way traditional storage vendors view operate, uh, object, object stores in newer Web 2.0 or cloud players do. So we'll talk about that and the resulting impl implications. Uh, object stores don't exist in isolation, so we'll take a look at the ecosystem that's involved. Then we begin to get into some technical detail, uh, starting with a basic blueprint of distributed object store technology, both at a hardware and software level, and then include with architectural considerations. In the end, uh, every design chase choice you make has pluses and minuses, so we'll look at what some of those are. And we'll finish up by looking at some of the existing implementations out there and, and do a compare and contrast. This next series is the main section on how these systems operate, beginning with the birth of an object and walking through how they are ingested into an object store. And then we'll focus on some pragmatic details that come with any storage system, such as how is data protection achieved, deduplication, replication, that kind of thing. An interesting facet of object stores is that they claim to not require tape backup, which is obviously a huge plus. So we'll look at understanding why this would be the case. Uh, every design has failure points. In storage, the biggest of these result in data unavailability or worse, data loss. We'll walk through how these manifest and why. Then we'll uh, get into how a system can recover from such errors through a process of self-healing. 
Finally, we'll end up talking a bit about performance and discuss what makes these systems fast or, or not. The last main topic that I could think of at this juncture is to talk a little bit about dedupe and object stores. Dedupe needs to function a bit differently in an object store than it would with either block or file. So we'll talk about those differences and why they exist. We'll finish by talking, uh, taking a look at the road ahead. Object stores have been around for a decade now and the category has changed over that time. However, it really hasn't evolved at the pace one might expect. I think the rate of change will increase in this decade, and as a result, we'll see a greater divergence between how the systems are both used and implemented. We'll finish by taking a look at some potential growth vectors in this segment over time. Here are some links that may prove useful. The first is a link to the new HDS blog that talks about object stores, as well as other areas such as file and big data. The first article that kicks off the blog is available on that site. Finally, there's a technical paper that talks about the principles of operation for distributed object stores. For technical viewers, it might be quicker to just go to that paper directly and see some of what we'll be talking about here. In a paper like that, it's impossible to be as comprehensive as I hope to be in this series, but it is a useful introduction to some of the more pressing issues with the design and operation of this class of storage system. So that's it. Uh, it's a bit ambitious, but I hope we can get to all the topics. Please uh, send me any, uh, an email with any comments or suggestions you might have, and thank you for tuning in.